Hello Hot Wheel Collectors. Today's video is going to be the top 10 Hot Wheels that I've purchased in 2014. A recap of the year past. And this is a video that's been going around amongst collectors on YouTube. And I've been nominated by Josh the Collector Guy to show off my top 10 cars and also to nominate a few other uh, collectors out there, other YouTube enthusiasts with Hot Wheel collections that they video online and uh, share with the rest of the community of collectors. So I have a few more than 10, not too much more. I'm going to try and keep this video moving along so I don't get hung up talking about any one car for just too long. And in no particular order, uh, you'll probably notice that I've got my Turbo Tracks. Turbo Glow Jump Set and 3000, Super 3000 set in the back here as a backdrop. And the reason being is that uh, each set came with two exclusive cars, which are very difficult to come by and were, I, and are the cars that I count as being some of those difficult and top 10 cars for 2014. So we've got the red Solar CX-4 and the yellow wind splitter. As you can see here. The wind splitter is a little bit more easy to find on the secondary market. However, the Solar CX-4 seems to be a difficult one. Not sure why. One thing it could be is that the wind splitter was used in the Hot Wheels on Videos series of 1990 and 91 and a few of those were carried forward into that series probably leftovers from the TurboTrax 3000 play sets either way it's still an uncommon series as well so pretty cool the other TurboTrax set that uh, I have here is the Turbo Glow Jump set and it featured a Ferrari Testarossa red with uh, neon glowing tampos also there was the blown Camaro metallic blue with neon glowing tampos lo and behold I did manage to locate both of these cars in 2014 the blown Camaro was a difficult one to come by in mint condition such as this one here However, the real challenging piece for this pair of cars, and again, I don't have any explanation at all for this, the Ferrari Testarossa was extremely difficult for me to get. I've only seen it once, and uh, here it is. Moving along, I've got some interesting uh, cars from Japan. They came with these nice little collector boxes. The cars themselves are indifferent from the North American market or Hong Kong or wherever you would find them, except these obviously were sold in Japan due to the packaging that came with the cars. And this one here is called the Carabo. It's a nice little piece with opening doors. But the most interesting thing for this car and what makes it so elusive and hard to find are those black wall wheels. This car commonly was found with red line tires. For a while there, I wasn't sure this car really existed until I found that one after three years of searching. And this one here, I just love this Poison Pinto. It's not an impossible vehicle to find, although somewhat pricey. But to find it with the packaging from Japan, matching and in perfect condition, with no scuffs at all in the chrome, that is a very difficult find from 1976 and jumping over to some speed machines this was a release of cars that Hot Wheels or Mattel put out in 1983 that aren't even labeled Hot Wheels except for on the bases of certain models they were uh, kind of a discount series that uh, were built a little cheaper than the average Hot Wheels of the time. They had, most of them had plastic bases and fairly simple paint jobs. But nowadays, 
due to their short-lived run, they're very difficult to come by. So here is the very elusive red Supervan mint in packaging. And the also almost equally as elusive red poison pinto. Now you do see three of these Monte Carlo stalkers here, but they are very hard to come by. This is the example I've owned for about seven years. It was pretty beat up and throughout the time I've been looking for Hot Wheels I've been looking for that car in nicer condition. Lo and behold in December of 2014 I found this sweet example. I had to pay quite a bit of money for it and sadly it does have a few issues. It's got a big chip on the corner there and the tampos weren't exactly perfect it's a little bit chipped up wouldn't you know two weeks later this one comes up for sale on eBay with a buy it now also quite high price but given the rarity of this car I think it was an anomaly that I found two of them within two weeks of each other I couldn't pass it up and this one as they say is dead mint so finally I can stop hunting that Monte Carlo stalker. Another Speed Machines vehicle that was very hard to find for me was this Vet van with the dark blue interior and a burgundy maroon type paint job. It's also a high raker. For some reason that one seems to be very difficult to come by. And going on to another series of the mid 80s, the Hot Wheels Crack Ups. This one's on an international card. And it's called the Knocker Stalker. It was painted three different paint styles with three different tampos, but of all three, the one with the Zap tampo on the side of it is the most difficult car to come by. This is another one that I've been looking for for quite some time and if you are so lucky to find this car I suggest you pick it up without hesitation as I did. These are real heavy castings, they're all metal the clamp down hood designed to uh, be played with and crashed they're often not in the best condition when found loose but this one's on a perfect card and it will stay on that card. Now down to some very very rare Hot Wheels cars from the 70s. This 1977 promotional Toys R Us van, super van, with red line tires is about as mint as they come. No issues at all with that one. Although you have to be very careful with these vans to make sure that you're not getting um, one that's been altered or restored and passed off as an original. So carefully look at those tampos, make sure that they don't have any raised appearance. The original tampos are very uniquely applied and it's hard to reproduce that. Also you want to check the rivets that hold the base of the vehicle to the body. At any rate, this is a very limited van and I was happy to pick it up. Definitely one of the most limited super vans from 1975. The uh, something Canyon. Oh boy, what a terrible time to forget. Anyways, the Cutoff Canyon playset from 1975 was very rare. And it came with this exclusively painted blue super van with flames. So again, you have to be sure that those rivets are the real ones and it hasn't been repainted. Believe it or not, I bought this one as a package deal with several other very rare cars. One of them being this Buzz Off with the actual Beetle tampo on it. This was a limited run car and the uh, paint job was a, almost I believe a pre-production tampo for this car that didn't quite work out. I, 
I would I would guess that you would have a lot of difficulty finding this car on the secondary market. And back over to our alternate colors. A sweet find for 2014 in the early part of the year was this red P917. The alternate colored car. All original. And a gorgeous red without a flaw on it. I've put the commonly found orange P917 next to it just so you can see the paint difference. These of course have the opening trunks with the detailed motors. And another extremely rare vehicle I found was this very limited run Volkswagen Bug from 1974. To find this orange beetle with the stripes and in mint conditions such as this, it's extremely uncommon. These cars were uh, quickly had their paint uh, tampos changed in 74 to a beetle on the roof, a bug. And one of the reasons identified was that it was too hard at the time for their tampo stamp machines to get all these stripes correctly lined up on the roof of the beetle and on the trunk and carrying on to the hood. So that one definitely fits the bill for one of my top 10 cars of 2014. This one is not an overly pricey car, but I thought it was pretty cool, given that it's a Volkswagen Rabbit, known as the Hair Splitter. This is an international release car that was sold only in France. And it's just a cool piece because normally these cars in the North American market and Hong Kong and Malaysia had a wheel spare tire rack on the roof that involved holes drilled into the casting to support the rack. Whereas this model clearly does not have that and is in really nice condition. The final two vehicles I'd like to show you guys for my top, top vehicles of 2014 are these, the Motocross 1 released in 1975 no 1974 and the Street Eater released in 1975 these were the first two motorcycles released in the Hot Wheels mainline series at the time there were motorcycles released in the Rumblers line of Hot Wheels castings back in the early 70s but they weren't part of the actual collectible series, collection series, that you would find other cars such as the P917, the Supervan, and pretty much all of the Hot Wheels released between 74 and up through 75. These are a rare set of vehicles, often found in not so great condition due to the delicate nature of the toy with plastic handlebars and fenders and a very fragile kickstand they're pretty cool I was happy to add those as well one more casting I'd like to feature are these rapid transit buses although they're not overly rare or valuable you'll notice that it's very easy to find one with the blue tampo on the back it took me a long time to find this one with the black background. So that's worth adding to your collection if you collect buses or all things from the mid 80s in Hot Wheels. Keep an eye out for that black background bus. And finally for this video I'd like to nominate a few people. There are uh, just so many so many uh, fellow collectors and subscribers and friends that I, I speak to and and share my videos with on YouTube it's it was difficult to compile a list and keep it within a reasonable length of time so I've randomly taken about 10 of my uh, 
top fans, as YouTube likes to point out every once in a while. I'm not saying that they are the top 10 fans, but they're definitely up there. And this goes based on how long they've been subscribers of mine, uh, how often they make comments on my videos, and how many of my videos they watch. So in no particular order, I'd like to nominate Race Grooves, who has been a subscriber of mine since August 8th of 2010. Ghost Jerker, subscriber since November 26, 2011. And Diecast TV Channel, you are nominated. Diecast HD, also nominated. Hot Wheels Costa Rica, you guys are nominated. Mr. Dezave, 380. Count five. King Hot Wheels. Marty France. And Jeff Hill. So like I said, there. Uh, if I could go on, I'd nominate everyone on my list of fans, but there's ten. And if you've already made your video, well, I guess I'll find it because I'm going to go look on YouTube and see if there's anything I've missed. But if you haven't, I'd like to see what you guys got. Share with the community. Thanks everyone for watching and uh, happy hunting. I'd also like to thank Shad Juice for starting this top 10 Hot Wheels of 2014 viral video extravaganza. And I should probably point out that he did say in his initial video that uh, no more than three should be nominated, but since I have nearing 15,000 subscribers, I thought I might just up that a little bit. Thanks, Chad Juice.